It's not usually due to hunger when animals have to eat for themselves. It's the evolutionary thing occasionally, and sometimes it goes too far. Still, some animals, like poor this hapless bird, just have very rotten luck. The snake continues to move even if it is without a head. It even self-bites sometimes. Actually, due of the way snakes' bodies function, even a severed head can be harmful. Because snakes are cold-blooded animals, which means they obtain their heat from the sun and warm surfaces, they don't require a lot of energy to stay warm, which implies they don't require a lot of oxygen to fuel their brains. Thus, the head of a snake can exist on its own for several minutes or even hours. Snakes bite everything they come across, most of the time being unaware that they are without a body. And indeed, this poor raccoon is devouring himself because he is stuck. Apart from the trap, I realize it sounds awful and looks bad, but in this case, our natural instincts are to blame. An animal in the wild can grow so determined to survive and break free that it can even injure itself, but that's something else for later. Its massive size is a result of having eaten a porcupine. For the same reason, it's dead. For this reason, the majority of mature, experienced animals almost ever hunt porcupines, their numerous quills, which often break off and stab into predators so deeply that pulling them out hurts, make them hard to kill. Porcupines also don't flee from enormous opponents since they are not readily frightened. Hey, but a porcupine still has to eat something, even if someone manages to kill it without getting wounded. The spiders eat their own legs, and the python was not equal to the task. Strange as that may sound, we discovered a ton of eyewitness reports on Reddit. After catching them, people discovered that the spiders were devouring their limbs. Additionally, we found a few articles about the topic. This is probably a defensive tactic of some sort, and since that's how spiders eat, they sort of suck their legs out rather than actually eating them. In any case, I'm hoping that the BBC will document this or at least produce a few documentaries on it eventually. However, there are some eerie videos like this one. This deer also crosses the road here, but you get the picture. In actuality, animals typically cannot use the infrastructure in modern cities because it is so inconvenient for humans. Deer and many other wild creatures are frequently ran over because of this. The numbers make it quite evident how serious this problem is and how big of an issue it is. In various parts of the world, deer might be involved in up to 220,000 car accidents annually. Approximately 20 of these accidents end in fatalities, while over a thousand cause injury to people. Conversely, deer mortality rates are far greater. Sometimes it seems like deer are just darting around aimlessly, which might sadly result in them getting entangled in trees. Even without any roads or vehicles involved, this circumstance might nevertheless have very serious repercussions. Regarding deer, things appear to be both pretty depressing and fairly predictable. But the episode involving the bird really took me by surprise. It seemed like a common occurrence, the owner was preparing to release their pet falcon for hunting by removing its hood. But, a passing truck and the falcon abruptly collided in a matter of seconds. I was really taken aback by how abrupt and sad the situation was. To put things into perspective, as of 2021, car crashes claim the lives of between 49 and 340 million birds in the United States year. So what really happened here? This is a snippet from a Danish cooking and hunting show where the participants try to hunt and prepare different kinds of animals in each episode. The host went to France on this episode to go partridge hunting. The other hunters talked one of the falcon owners into releasing his bird close to the roadway, even though he was hesitant to do so. That proved to be a really bad idea, but who would have guessed that this kind of thing would be pulled off by a falcon, which is a bird that seems intelligent. Nevertheless, let's return to the truth that animals devour themselves. I do feel bad for the falcon. For instance, the fabled idea of a snake biting its own tail has its origins in ancient mythology. The Greek term for a snake that bites or devours its tail is an ouroboros, meaning, tail devourer. In general, 
the Greeks of antiquity were quite adept at logic. Because of the multitude of connotations associated with the symbol Ouroboros, it was utilized in alchemy, religion, magic, and even psychology. Not unexpectedly, the phrase also ultimately appeared in reptile-related scientific literature. Consider the African lizard genus known to biologists as Ouroboros cataphractus. These creatures get their name from biting and curling their tails into the shape of a ball that acts as a shield. It is somewhat similar to the behavior of armadillos, however these lizards are unquestionably not armadillos. There isn't much scientific proof that snakes try to consume themselves or bite their tails. Naturally, there have been a few instances of captive snakes biting off their own tails. In 2014, for instance, a female albino western hognose snake cut off its tail in the United Kingdom. But scientists aren't concerned about that. Snake behavior in the wild is a very other story. Videos showing snakes biting themselves are frequently seen online, but the unsettling part about all of this is that the snakes are frequently ones that have been struck by cars or other similar objects. According to biologists, this behavior is evidence that snakes are in great agony. They just squirm out of these kinds of circumstances and bite everything they can get hold of. In addition to severe stress or trauma, some experts speculate that a snake may bite its own tail if it is hungry and misidentifies it as prey. It may also occur when a snake tries to attack another snake and becomes disoriented. Though I'm not an expert on snakes, it might sound unusual. Even nevertheless, scientists are aware that a snake may unintentionally begin consuming its own tail when attempting to devour another snake. This occurs because snakes appear to have a primitive brain in addition to a strong eating reflex. In other words, once the snake spots the food, everything else essentially becomes irrelevant. Naturally, snake species that prey on other snake species, like the king cobras in India, are more prone to this behavior. This kind of confusion is not seen in other snake species. When it comes to eating skin, it is far easier. Some people love to tear out their burrs, even among humans. Don't do it, it's not safe. Two things to remember are that you can become infected and that none of us are reptiles. It's true that some frogs and lizards consume their shed skin, this behavior is known as dermatophagy, even insects do that. Cockroaches from Madagascar, for instance, hiss and feed on their former exoskeletons. This habit is due to two factors. Initially, this behavior enables them to conceal the proof of their presence. If you consume the skin, its smell will keep predators away from you and keep them from finding you. Energy conservation is the second justification. An animal has expended effort, time, and energy to build its skin, and it required significant energy to lose it. Even a dead, dry patch of skin contains nutrition. Eating is a last-ditch effort to recover some, if not all, of the lost resources. Sometimes, while the skin is still on their bodies, creatures like geckos begin to consume it. The image is eerie, resembling a gecko devouring its own body. It does have a function, though. Simply put, the geckos are multitasking. It becomes less vulnerable and stays in one spot for shorter periods of time the quicker it sheds its skin and feeds. Hence, geckos provide two crucial functions while frightening onlookers. I took this picture of a tiger in Thailand a few years ago. Its hind pop's disappearance is presumably due to a trap, though we cannot be certain of what happened to it. This footage was taken at Murchison Falls National Park back in 2015. The lion in this photo was captured by poachers in a trap. It's not only about the snares and traps, though. Animals that become entangled fight valiantly to escape, much like the raccoon you saw before. And occasionally they wind up chewing off their own limbs in their bid for escape. They discovered a female bear in China in 2016 that was ensnared in a trap. They were taken aback when they approached. The paw that had gotten caught in the trap was the one that the female bear was chewing on. She would have escaped the trap if the bear had been successful, but at what cost? To be clear, they assisted, rescued, 
and gave the bear the attention it needed, so don't be alarmed. Regretfully, they had to remove its paw. The bear is still alive, though, and it will now live in safety at a designated center. Although the bear's actions during its captivity may seem uncomfortable, they are essential to its survival. Being motionless in a trap increases the likelihood of malnutrition and dehydration death. It cannot be avoided. On the other hand, the bear has a decent chance of survival if it can move around unhindered despite losing some limbs. Granted, living without limbs is a more difficult life than facing certain death, but it's still better than nothing at all. After all, there are many examples of untamed creatures living without one or more limbs and still prospering. Thus, the bear made a decision that would increase her chances of survival, and she is not alone. The similar maneuver is used by many predatory animals, including wolves, coyotes, cougars, and raccoons, to get out of a hunting trap. It is important to note that the aforementioned cases do not meet the criteria for auto-cannibalism. In some instances, the animals merely gnawed off their own limbs without really eating them. Rather, they left their dismembered limbs in the traps and made a fast escape from the hazardous location. If an animal is extremely hungry, they may even start eating its own limbs. In this sense, spiders remain somewhat enigmatic. But we do know that mantises occasionally pull off these antics when they're in the mood for food. Although it appears somewhat graphic, there is some reasonable reasoning for it. Consider it this way, chomping on its own legs is essentially a survival strategy used by an enraged mantis. From an evolutionary perspective, having children is preferable to having all of one's limbs. The good news is that after the next molt, those missing legs will grow back. The mantises may regenerate amazingly. It's a fine line, though, since too much gumming up could prevent it from making it to the next mold. I just have to say a few words about butterflies while we're talking about insects. Even young children are aware of the stages of a caterpillar's life cycle, it begins with an egg, grows by eating leaves, forms a cocoon around itself, and eventually transforms into a stunning butterfly. We take it for granted, it's a seemingly ordinary yet amazing experience. However, are you aware of how a caterpillar turns into a butterfly? What precisely takes place within the cocoon? Well, some people aren't prepared to learn this. Thus, once the cycle of molting and growth is finished, the caterpillar typically stops eating and seeks cover from inclement weather. It drapes its body with silk that it has made and hangs upside down. Everything is familiar and apparent thus far. However, as soon as the cocoon is ready, the process simultaneously gets bizarre and repulsive. The transformation of a caterpillar into a butterfly or moth requires much more than magic alone. The caterpillar starts to break down on its own. Yes, it does release enzymes that start to liquefy the caterpillar almost entirely. At this point, opening the cocoon will cause a liquid concoction to emerge in place of the bug. It will have a wonderful supper. Nevertheless, there are small hidden structures within this caterpillar ooze. The caterpillar has unique cell clusters known as imaginal disks when it hatches out of the egg. These disks are ineffective during the caterpillar stage because the caterpillar secretes a substance that stops the cells from proliferating and expanding. Even when the caterpillar begins to leak, these cells do not degrade. Furthermore, the imaginal disks start to proliferate and expand. Very soon, they start to feed on the slime that was once the caterpillar in order to continue growing. Everything you need to put together an entire bug is included, including disks for the wings, legs, antenna, and so on. In certain instances, the imaginal disks can quickly expand from 50 microscopic cells to over 50,000. A moth or butterfly eventually emerges from the cocoon at the conclusion of this completely bizarre process. By the way, a small study found that moths and butterflies might recall something from their caterpillar days, but not enough information was gathered to make firm conclusions. Then it occurred to me, what about larger reptiles? If little lizards can lose their tails and grow them back, what about larger reptiles? Is a Komodo dragon able to perform such a feat? According to computer modeling, 
the biting force of the Komodo dragon is comparatively low, at its strongest, it can reach 39 newtons, while the bite force of an Australian saltwater crocodile of the same size can reach 252 newtons. But the Komodo dragon's keen teeth and strong neck make it ideal for a slicing strike. Considering all of this, I believe the Komodo dragon could simply take off its tail if it so desired. Why would it want to do it in the first place is the question. For instance, it's common knowledge that domestic Komodo dragons bite off their tails. Why? They just do it, and no one is aware of it. It may also occur when the tail starts to pose a risk. For instance, when a crocodile or other huge predator attacks the lizard. The tail will obstruct any bone destroyed during the attack, it is easier to rip it off than to drag it around and run the danger of infection. To avoid wasting any valuable nutrients, the Komodo dragon might even consume its tail after pulling it off. Of course, we are unable to verify this. Such cases have not been reported thus far. On the other hand, theoretically speaking, the Komodo dragon truly does not have many possibilities to survive in the absence of a tail. When their tails are damaged or severed, Agamid lizards, Komodo dragons, and chameleons usually do not develop new ones. A Komodo dragon cannot regrow its tail if it loses it, unless it perishes from infection or blood loss. It will probably find it difficult to compete with healthy Komodo dragons that are showing off their tails. The outcome is rather clear. Many lizard species can also lose a portion of their tail in order to elude a predator. The portion of the tail that is discarded falls to the ground and continues to wriggle like a living thing, deterring the predator from seeing the lizard's weaker body. The predator may remain diverted for up to five minutes at a time. That gives the lizard ample time to get away. The predator will, therefore, keep holding onto the fallen tail or attempt to capture it. Put simply, everyone has a part to perform. Since lizards frequently store fat in their tails, the predator gets some energy from them, which benefits the lizard. This makes sense because a well-fed predator won't seek out the lizard to kill and consume it. However, even when it has been dropped, the lizard may still benefit from the same tail. If a predator doesn't eat it first, some lizards, like skinks, have been observed to devour their own tails in order to use up the energy they contain. Certain species of lizards can give up their tails voluntarily, even with gentle prodding. In other words, the tail essentially falls off on its own and is not severed. Lizards do this by flexing the muscles close to the base of their tails, which causes the vertebra to break. But the majority of the time, a hungry predator will seize and snap the tail. An occasional injured or partially broken tail may finally break away from the lizard as it swims around. Although it's difficult to tell for sure, it frequently looks as though the lizards are attempting to remove their tails on purpose. Up until recently, no one had ever observed American alligators regenerate their tails, despite the fact other reptiles like geckos and iguanas are known to be capable of doing so. According to the study, baby alligators may regrow their tails to a length of roughly 9 inches. It's interesting to note that they are the biggest creatures with this capacity for regeneration. Even more astounding is the fact that they have some of the highest tissue regeneration rates in the animal kingdom. Because they lack skeletal muscle tissue, the regenerated tails aren't quite as good as the originals. This kind of muscle can regenerate in certain animals and lizards which makes it a little unusual. However, it's possible that alligators can conserve energy by avoiding the more energy-intensive muscle regeneration stage. Despite having a stronger body than the majority of other reptiles, alligators are weak when they are young. Almost all of the world's predators, including raccoons, birds, and other alligators, eat them. Thus, an alligator could benefit greatly by having the ability to shed its tail and grow it again. Adults may or may not be able to perform the same task, scientists have not yet been able to verify this. Therefore, might dinosaurs, those enormous extinct lizards, have performed the same feat if lizards can regrow tails and alligators, which are lizards, can do the same? Perhaps a few of them did.
Dinosaurs and alligators remain relatively close cousins despite the fact that the progenitors of alligators, birds, and dinosaurs split up some 250 million years ago. It's unfortunate that no dinosaur fossils exhibiting tail regrowth have been found to date, but it's possible that they haven't been discovered by scientists. Scientists think it will be challenging to determine for sure, but they do not rule out this possibility. The vertebrae in the regenerated portion of the skeleton are replaced by a cartilage tube as the tail grows back. Unlike bone, cartilage cannot remain underground for millions of years while waiting to be unearthed by archaeologists. Therefore, when a skeleton without a tail is discovered, scientists are unable to determine if the bones just vanished or if the dinosaur lost its tail before growing it back, possibly multiple times. Can a snake use its venom to bite itself and kill itself? Researchers have discovered that it is essentially unfeasible. For example, if a poisonous snake accidentally bites itself, the venom delivered into the bloodstream is suppressed by antibodies. Snakes have developed such that, although they can bite their own tails, their venom cannot cause them to die. It appears that evolution had to take certain safety measures because there were precedents. Remember that a stressed-out snake is not likely to inject itself with venom by biting itself, as they are well aware that their poison essentially does not function against other snake species. This is the reason why snake bites frequently have a humorous appearance. Knowing how to use their poison wisely, these reptiles would rather not squander it on unaffected foes. As a result, they don't always settle arguments with their teeth. Rather, they push and curl around one another. Fire and scorpions, there is a legend that a scorpion that is in danger, as one that is caught in a fire, will sting itself to avoid needless suffering. This story is based on true observations, but individuals misinterpreted what was actually going on, as is frequently the case. Scientists have recently provided insight into the issue. Scorpios are a kind of animal known as poikilothermic, which means that their body temperature varies. They are so dependent on the warmth of their surroundings because they are unable to control their own body temperature. This explains why, in the presence of fire, their body becomes heated and rapidly becomes dehydrated, resulting in frenzied spasms and tail contractions. The scorpion appears to be jabbing itself, but it's really more of a last-minute involuntary movement. Which one sounds worse? I'm not sure. One of the most dangerous issues in primate colonies is the destructive self-biting behavior of stressed macaws. About 10% of monkeys kept in captivity exhibit the unsettling behavior of self-harming. The percentage of rhesus macaws, which are typically kept in laboratories, that self-bite may reach up to 14%. They may begin for a variety of causes. It's more likely emotional distress than boredom, though it does happen occasionally. For instance, the animal would find it difficult to adjust if the cage was moved, it was split up from its companion, or there were other changes. Your mind is consuming itself, according to a recent study, prolonged sleep deprivation might lead to the brain eating itself. This is a result of the cells that break down so-called cellular trash exerting more effort. As everyone knows, a good night's sleep is necessary for the normal operation of the brain. If you've ever stayed up too late, you've undoubtedly realized that the next day is considerably more difficult to concentrate and make decisions. However, experts are now learning that persistent sleep deprivation can lead to far more serious issues. It turns out that when we don't get enough sleep, our brain cells start to eat themselves. This process, called autophagy, is a natural part of our body's way of cleaning up damaged cells and recycling their components. But when we don't get enough sleep, the cells that are responsible for this process start to work overtime, and they can end up eating healthy cells as well. This can lead to all sorts of problems, including memory loss, difficulty concentrating, and even an increased risk of developing diseases like Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. So if you're not getting enough sleep, it's time to start prioritizing it for the sake of your brain health. That's it for today, folks. Thanks for sticking around until the end. If you liked the video, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to our channel for more content like this. And as always, stay curious.